Want to make an extra 5.2 billion of income for your business? Well, how about an extra 6.8 billion? You see that on top of the regular profits that an airline is making with these extremely high fees and you think, man, they must be making an absolute ridiculous amount of money. However, they're not. They're losing billions of dollars. And their current business model is basically a house of cards that couldn't sustain any time of economic turbulence, no pun intended. I started thinking about this because a few weeks ago I posted this video with an older lady that was unable to mind her manners while she was sitting next to somebody else on a plane. And in that video I said something along the lines of she paid $137 to fly from Boston to LA and she's riding on a $100 million plane and she's acting like she owns the entire aircraft. Of course that led to people in multiple comment sections saying $137? There's no way you could do that today. This is in the 1990s. Which is sad because if you've learned anything from my channel it should be you should at least do the minimum amount of research before you talk about something as I've roasted a bunch of people on TikTok who have no sense talking about anything and yet make videos to share to everybody. You can get a ticket from Boston to LA for $137. I jumped in the old Google machine and here you can see the summer tickets. This is two months out during a normally very expensive time of year to fly and as you can see here $137 would actually work. And then it got me thinking about something. Delta just recorded record high wild crazy profits in 2023. Yet they're charging $144 to do the exact same flight that Spirit is doing for $68. Now Spirit is in financial trouble and I talked about that last year that if that merger with JetBlue didn't come together that they were going to be in trouble economically and JetBlue was forecasting that they were going to have to raise their ticket prices by I think like 40%. And so that merger ended up not happening and their stock went into the toilet, which is what I said would happen if things didn't work out. Now, the business models are different, but with Spirit granted, after you paid for your bag and bought a bag of mixed nuts and a water in the airport, you're paying a similar cost to Delta. But yet Delta is having record profits and, and Spirit is, is losing hundreds of millions of dollars. So so it didn't really make sense to me. And that's where I realized this whole thing is a house of cards. You probably noticed if you traveled in the last few years that the airlines are everywhere trying to sell you their credit cards. And if you're like me, you would have thought, oh, okay, it's just another loyalty program. If you're buying and using their credit cards and you're getting some bonus and that gives you a loyalty, so you want to stick with that airline, that's really what I thought it was, but it's not. These airlines are actually getting massive payouts from their partnerships with these banks. And in some cases, like with American Airlines, they're trying to renegotiate their prices and dramatically increase the profits that they get from these banks. And the airlines can dictate that and really press that because the banks are making such a ridiculous amount of money of profit on using these credit cards. You see when you go to a store and you buy something for hundred dollars they're gonna charge that store a fee and that fee might be two to four percent. So let's say you spend hundred dollars at the store and they end up with ninety six dollars. So that's a four dollar split and you think oh well that's not really a big deal but when you magnify that over millions and hundreds of millions of people doing it it really starts to add up. Now that's part of the money that they make the rest is made when you start buying a lot of things that you can't afford and then you start paying the 18 to 29 percent interest on that credit card because you just had to pay for a trip to that exotic destination for that girl you met on OnlyFans whose mom was sick and she had to get to Bali in first class for a week. So you pay for that ticket, you don't have the money to do it and now you're making monthly payments for her to visit mom who's sick. Now these graphs I'm pulling straight from the government and they're tracking all the spending that's going on. Anybody can access these. But here's the consumer credit card spending and keep in mind this graph started in 2000. Americans are living way past what they can reasonably afford and the airlines are profiting massively over it. And the thing is is that if that bank doesn't want to play ball with that airline, that airline will say, okay, uh, Chase, you don't want to play ball with me? That's fine. Then I'll just go to Bank of America or I'll go to this bank or that bank and they'll give me the deal that I want. So either give me the deal that I want or I'm going to go partner with somebody else. And they have all the flight attendants, gate agents, people in the terminals out there pushing, trying to sell people and get people on their credit card. It's an amazing business concept, 
but there's a huge flaw in it. When you look at this graph, you can see the default rate, and the default rate here is showing people in the bottom 10% of, of economic situation, and this is also showing people in the highest brackets for the socioeconomic situation, and you can see the defaults on both of them are rising really rapidly. As people start to default on their credit cards, the credit card companies are not going to be able to reasonably justify giving them a card, because if they give them a card and they spend $30,000 on it and then they can't pay it back, their credit's going to get ruined, their credit's going to get ruined, the bank will loan them money, the bank won't loan them money, and then the whole thing starts to crumble. And right now, for the last, I don't know, several years, there's been a really low unemployment rate. This is according to the government. Unemployment is extremely low. So with the government saying the unemployment rate is low, and it's kind of hard to really verify that because if you ask some people, they're having friends that have lost their jobs and can't get another one, what we can all agree on is the cost of things have gone outrageously expensive. Sure, I mean, you want to go buy a new car, you're talking about a thousand bucks a month. You want to go rent a house, you're talking, depends on where you go. Um, I'm in Miami, it's $4,500 a month if you want to get a small apartment right in the downtown of Miami, which is crazy. You want to go to the grocery store, everything is like 40% of what it was just a few years ago. So the overall inflation has gone out of control, that we can all agree on. What the unemployment rate is, well, those numbers can be manipulated because it's just something that you can say, oh, well, they haven't applied for unemployment and so it's fine and you can kind of fudge those numbers, but no one's going to disagree with things have gotten a lot more expensive and we haven't seen any time of economic downturn for over a decade. And even though a lot of things have gone up over the last few years, like pilot salaries themselves, one of the things that has not gone up a lot is the cost of an airline ticket. How is that possible? Well, the airlines are making billions, and that's with a B, and use their staff to sell you on their credit card because of the huge revenue they generate from it. Here's the problem, and let's start with Delta because they just gave out a huge bonus to their staff and their executives. Now, this is all public information on their website. This is by no means secret. I don't have an inside connection that gave me this information, but you can see here that Delta made $58 billion in 2023. And then when you go down here, you see their expenses is $52.5 billion. So what's left over? Roughly $5.5 billion. And you think, wow, that's a lot of money, right? It is. But how much did they make off of American Express and their partnership together with them? $6.8 billion. So if they didn't have that deal, they would have lost over a billion dollars. Okay, so maybe Delta didn't do it right. Maybe that's a fluke, right? Well, let's see. Here's American Airlines financials from 2023 almost 53 billion in revenue, their expenses, almost 50 billion dollars, leaving only 3 billion left over in overall profit. 3 billion, pretty good, right? How much did they make on their deal with the credit cards? Well, they only made a measly 5.2 billion off of their deal with their credit cards. So if you're taking away them selling you credit cards, they would have actually lost 2 billion dollars. Now, I couldn't find the numbers for United. For some reason, Chase doesn't seem to want it to be known how much United made over their deal. But almost 54 billion in revenue, almost 50 billion in costs, and so they have 4 billion left over. So Delta made almost 7 billion, American made over 5 billion. My guess is that United came in somewhere in the middle of that, so they would have probably lost a billion or maybe a little bit more on their airline as well without the credit cards. So, Kelsey, why should I care? These airlines are being able to allow me to fly really cheap, and if I don't use a credit card, it doesn't really matter to me, right? So why should I even care? Great point. Well, as these default rates continue to go on credit cards, people will start getting denied. And as they start getting denied, these big payouts from the credit card companies are going to start to disappear. And as people start to lose their jobs, because it's just the natural flow with the way the governments have set up the economies right now, as people start to lose their jobs, they're not going to be able to pay on their credit cards, or they're not going to be able to qualify for credit cards, which means the banks aren't going to be giving these big bonuses to the airlines. Now, that also means they're not going to have the discretionary income to get on all of these flights. So you're going to have banks not paying these big bonuses and these big payouts to these airlines, and the airlines not having as many people traveling. And now they're going to have to change their ticket prices from these extremely low ticket prices and raise them up a lot to cover that deficit of five, six, seven billion dollars. They're going to have to make that up over less people. Less people flying, more expensive airfare. You see how this is going to play out? And my big fear is going to see this, where airlines start getting bailed out from the U.S. taxpayer, which I think is totally unfair. If you have companies that are giving away millions of dollars 
to themselves and other people and then get themselves into a financial problem and go, oh, well, we employ lots of people. We're going to just need the American taxpayers to go ahead and give us some money because we made a mistake. You know, once I could maybe forgive it, but it's happening again and again where these corporate companies are getting bailed out because they're too big to fail. So now you understand why these airlines are pressing so hard every time you're on a flight to get one of their credit cards because it's basically one of the main ways they're able to stay in business. And the other issue is, is that as these everyday Americans start racking up more and more debt like you saw, they're going to not be able to pay that debt and that debt is going to be burying them. And the airlines are making billions of dollars off of this. And then if they turn around and ask for a bailout, those same people that are buried in debt are going to be paying with their tax dollars when they get back to working again, are going to be paying those airlines who are getting billions of dollars off of this backdoor deal with the banks. Now, I'm not upset at the airlines or the banks. I mean, they're running a business. It's your choice as an everyday person to get that credit card and buy stuff that you can't afford if you're doing that. That is completely your choice, and they should be able to do that. What I am against is running a big deficit of a billion dollars off of the current ticket prices. And what I think is going to happen is as the economy starts to downturn, these airline prices are going to have to go way up and the amount of people flying them is going to go way down. And then you're going to have a bunch of pilots and a bunch of people that are going to be put on the streets. And then the airlines are going to start going to the banks and going to the government and saying, hey, um, I'm going to go ahead and need some of that government money because we kind of made another boo-boo. Sadly, I was right about Spirit and how that whole deal was going to go down. I'm really hoping that these airlines have a plan for when the overall credit card spending starts to go down and they're stopped getting these big bonuses from the airlines, but I, I guess time will tell. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.